Okay, so one of my favorite concepts in writing music is a, an idea called an isorhythm. Um, I used to hear this called a million different things, um, you know, as I'd play with different groups and whatnot, but I had played with a drummer at one point who knew a lot more than music than I did, or a lot more about music than I did, and uh, he told me that what I was talking about was called an isorhythm. So basically what it is, is when you have a melodic phrase that consists of you know, let's say five notes. It doesn't have to be five notes, I'm just doing an example now. So you have a melodic phrase consisting of five notes, and maybe you have a rhythmic pattern consisting of six accents. So let's just pick a five note phrase, so something really simple like... Okay, so that's going to be our melodic phrase. One, two, three, four, five, okay, and then we want a rhythmic pattern consisting of something obnoxious like groups of 3 16th notes and 4 16th notes. So we have Okay, so you know, I'll play that with the metronome so you have a better idea of what that would feel like. Okay, so that's basically the idea. Um, I, I just made this example up on the spot. So, um, you know, just with a guitar and a metronome, it's probably not that magical, but I'm going to show you some examples um, in, you know, more modern popular music. And then I'll show you some ways that I've sort of messed with this, and hopefully this um, gets you more, uh, gives you more ideas to you know expand on your own ideas. All right, so the first song I want to look at is called Pineal Gland Optics by Meshuggah. The second example we're going to look at would be the song um, Monochrome Pensive by The Contortionist. <laughs> Next example is something that I came across on YouTube explained by guitarist Jacob Zatecki. Uh, for anyone that doesn't know who that is, um, I highly suggest, you know, if you're a guitar player or even if not, uh, go check out his last three albums or even um, his original, I think it's like Wishful Lotus Proof, although I haven't listened to it much. His last three albums are just incredible. And um, he talked about this idea where Every time there's a downbeat, you can, um, uh, how do I say this? Every time there's a downbeat, you can change the subdivision in which you're playing. And you just repeat the same cycle of notes melodically, but you are cycling through them, um, you know, with a different subdivision each time. So what I mean by different subdivision is, every time there is a downbeat, every time there is a pulse, a beat in the song, or in the phrase, that we're focusing on, you can switch in between, you know, 16th notes, for example, and 8th note triplets, or 16th notes and 16th note quintuplets. Okay, so these are just examples I'm throwing at you. So the next example I'll play for you is from a song that I released a while ago where I am playing a 16 note phrase. So it's you know, originally just a 4-4 four, four phrase, it's one bar of 4-4, four, four. 
and they're all 16th notes, but in, that's how it's originally written. But what I do is every time there's a pulse, I do a uh, change between 16th notes and 16th note triplets. <laughs> So basically, you have to do um, four notes as 16th notes, and then six notes as 16th note triplets. So it's every time there is a, um, you know, a beat or a pulse, uh, that's when you switch the, um, the subdivision that you're playing. So this is really, really hard to do, um, and I haven't practiced this line in a really long time. So I'm just going to start really slow, and then I'm going to do a quicker speed to show you what it sounds like sped up. So slowly. Alright, so you can see that, um, you know, each time you're repeating this, you're playing the same 16 notes, the same sequence of 16 notes over and over again, but when you change the rhythmic grouping, you are getting something that feels totally different. So let's see what that sounds like maybe at 90 BPM, um, which I don't think is exactly up to speed, but... Alright, let's see if I can take it to 100. Alright, I'm gonna try 100. song I released um, and this song a part of I think it was like the verse or something like that I basically took a phrase that I led into the verse with and then what I did was I was looking at it like I have long notes and I have short notes and what I did was the short note in the original phrase happened in between two notes. Like the short duration of time happened in between two specific notes. So what I did was that short duration of time, you know, where I played like an eighth note, I changed each time I repeated the melodic phrase which note that eighth note would be. And then I kept all the other notes dotted eights. Or something like that. Um, I'm, I'm explaining this terribly, so uh, just look at the example. Okay, so the last one um, is another example of mine uh, where in this sort of like, uh, I don't want to call it a breakdown because uh, it's all clean, it's not like a traditional type of breakdown, but I mean I got this idea from pineal gland optics and you know, basically all it is is it's two different things. So on like the bass end of the guitar, the low notes that I play, I am playing a four note phrase that adheres, meaning there is a sharp repeat uh, at the end of four bars of 4-4. Four, four. So the phrase itself is a phrase in 17-16, and at the end of four bars of 4-4, four, four, the bass notes repeat. So those do not apply that that those bass notes do not apply to the concept I'm talking about. It is uh, the, mel the melody happening in the higher notes on the guitar that um, apply to what we're talking about. So basically, all I'm doing is I am playing uh, a G sharp going to E, and then a G sharp going to A. And I am just cycling between that 
and then it changes from G sharp to F sharp going down to E and then up to G sharp. Okay, so obviously I'm just talking right now and you have no idea what I'm saying. So I'm going to show you, um, and it's, this, it's literally, in my mind, it's like the same thing as pineal gland optics where you have a pattern, you know, either extending over, you know, a certain number of 4-4 four, four bars or you have a pattern repeating over a certain number of 4-4 four, four bars and within that pattern you have a melodic phrase that is not identical to the rhythmic phrase that is being played over. So hopefully I've explained that well. You'll see in the video uh, what I mean by all that. So that's, those are pretty much all the examples I could think of uh, when trying to show this concept. I mean, there's more that can be done with it. So I showed you this concept over, um, you know, phrases that were, you know, subdivided by 16th notes, 16th note triplets. Um, this can be expanded on. So this doesn't have to exist in the realm of just, you know, 16th note subdivisions or 16th note triplet subdivisions. You know, guys like Tigran, and Pliny, they do a lot of uh, quintuplet um, subdivided like songs. Like pretty much, they'll play an entire song where it's all a quintuplet feel. You're feeling fives the whole time. Um, so Tigran does that. Pliny will do that as well. Um, so those are two uh, artists that I would really, really suggest that anybody watching this check out if you haven't already. Um, Another idea too that this can be applied to is something like where you have, and I'll make another video about this as well, but where you have, you know, let's say you have eighth note triplets coming in on the, uh, you know, if you look at like a, a, a beat, like one E and a two E and a three E and a, what if you had eighth note triplets coming in on the E or the uh, you know what I mean? So like you could have a phrase that looks like that, and then you can, um, you know, apply the same methodology to those groupings. And bands like Carbomb does a lot of things like that, where they have triplet groupings come in on the E or the uh of a beat, or they'll have like quintuplet groupings come in on the E or the uh of just a quarter note pulse. Um, so I'll make videos on that stuff as well. I just wanted to get this out there and hopefully um, this inspired you guys to uh, create some more music. So thank you very much.